Families are the building blocks of communities. It's hard to imagine anything more disruptive to a family than losing a parent or a spouse to incarceration. To have a loved one removed from your life and sent to prison must be an overwhelmingly difficult experience for both the inmate and the family. I can still remember as a young child being the son of a pastor who was also a prison chaplain, still sitting on the bunks of those inmates, in many cases hearing the sad stories. Now make no mistake, I firmly believe that when people break the law, there must be consequences, and incarceration is oftentimes the appropriate consequence. However, the justice system and the Bureau of Prisons also have a responsibility to help rehabilitate that person and help the inmate have a successful reentry back into our communities. This makes sense from both a public safety perspective and one out of compassion for our fellow citizens. Because what is clear, is that virtually all of the inmates in federal prisons are going back to and returning to their communities and their families. When they are released, the question should be asked, will they be better or will they be worse? See, redemption has always been an American ideal. We need former prisoners to integrate back into society, restore stability to their families, and contribute to their communities. Inmate release, preparation, and programming is essential to developing and restoring hope. Hope that they will never return to prison. Hope that they will find a job. Hope that they will one day be able to support their family and hope that they will build a good life after prison. For that reason, rehabilitation and reentry efforts must be real and they must be effective. Three weeks ago, I spoke in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at a wonderful uh, nonprofit organization, the Winston-Salem Prison Ministry, doing a great job. But the Bureau of Prisons must also make successful inmate rehabilitation and reentry a priority. The Bureau must also evaluate its programs and reentry decisions so that their effectiveness can be measured based on evidence of success. We have got to figure out what reentry and rehabilitation strategies work best. Does release to a halfway house improve an inmate's chances at successful entry? Are some halfway houses more effective than others at assisting inmates to succeed? Would placing more inmates directly into home confinement re reduce recidivism? Do certain education or life skills tend to lead to more successful inmate recovery? These are all questions I look forward to discussing today. I believe that evidence-based assessments are essential to determine what programs work, especially those that work well at reducing recidivism and what programs simply do not work very well. I am grateful for all the witnesses here today. Appreciate your expertise. Reducing recidivism and improving inmate reentry services is a challenge, but it is one we must all be committed to achieving. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Chairman from North Carolina yields back.